Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Eckhart from EDSSA. Today we are reviewing two amazing drones from DJI. Both carry the same Matrice 4 name, but in fact completely different. That's the Matrice 4 and the Matrice 4 dock version as a standalone configuration. You're not going to see this review anywhere else. I'm going to give you an in-depth user experience to help you decide which one of these two drones is the right one for you. Everything I say is just my opinion, so don't take it to the bank. Firstly, I would like to do a side-by-side -side comparison. One thing that is quite significant, if you look at the recommended retail prices, this one is about 45% more. That includes the battery. If you look at this price, this drone comes with one battery, this one comes without a battery. So if you add the battery, it's about 45% more. If you look at what you're paying more for, you can find it in this drone. There's nothing that's interchangeable. The only thing that's the same are the cameras and this payload, which is the speaker and the spotlight. One thing that you should note is that when you buy this payload, then you're getting an adapter bracket with it. And DJI has done it quite smartly, is that they've recessed these threaded inserts deeper than the ones that are here. So if you put this adapter bracket on, you can't fit it onto this drone because the payload will sit too high. So in this drone, you can put the adapter bracket on and then it screws on from the bottom and then you put the payload on, works perfectly. The structure is completely different. One thing that is immediately noticeable is the lower point of gravity. So let's just do this here. Look at this with the payload. The force comes from here and basically everything, this entire drone is above the props. Even with the payload on, it's still below the props. It gives you far better stability. I'd be much more comfortable flying this drone in rough weather than this drone here. This is obviously a very good drone to use uh, mobile ops. If you do nature conservation, if you are a tracker in the field, anti poaching, then this drone is definitely the go to because you can just shove this into your backpack. You don't have to use the big case that it comes in. Then the M4D. The cons of this drone is it's bulky, but if you have a proper mobile command center rigged out with inverter and an alternator charger and you've got all the power that you need to power up this charging block, then you're sorted. It's got a solid airframe versus a foldable airframe. In engineering, you would always prefer things that are solid state. I've heard of operators or companies where employees take these drones and then they just flick them open, which is very, very bad for the airframe. It reduces your lifespan dramatically. This is one thing that you don't have to factor in when buying this drone. So if you're an operator and you look at the lifespan, the return of investment, then in this case, this drone might be a better choice. And then this also that the arms are off the ground means that your airframe, the force in your airframe from handling will be a lot less. Where this one, you, if you apply pressure to the, pop, to the body, you will press it down, you will weaken the arms. If you ever did mobile missions, if you do unplanned flights, especially in the security industry, they often launch from sites that have got a lot of debris lying around. And then this does cause a problem. Little pieces of grass or leaves or twigs that are lying around. These props will generally stay clear of anything. The different prop design is also quite significant. All the DJI drones, the props look the same. Same material, same design. These look completely different. They've got a curved design. These props also have eyes wicking capabilities. These are the only props that I know of that DJI has that does that. What is also significantly different is the motors. They are quite a, I don't know what the motor specs are, but this one is a lot stronger. Also, if you feel it, you can feel the magnetic force. It's physically bigger. This one actually looks like a toy compared to this one, although these are not toys. Then we're gonna look at the charging. And first glance, you look at the charging docks. This is a three-way, this is a four-way. I wanna to refer to the charging block first. So this is a 100 watt charging block. And that's a 100 watt battery. And this is a 150 watt charging block, a 240 watt battery. If you look at this, you can use this USB-C from this charging block, plug it into this charging port, and then you can charge. You can put it on a power bank, you can put it on a car charger, any high power charging block, and it will work just fine. If you want to charge this battery, you need this fucking thing. Without this, it doesn't work. If you plug this in, so don't be confused when you look at this because it does have a USB-C, but there's only an output, not an input. So you can plug your USB-C into here and then you can charge your remote. And theoretically, 
you could fly indefinitely with only three batteries, which is revolutionary. Last night we did the battery charge comparison. One thing that I realized about the battery, this is a very simple, quick and easy way to change the battery. Look, you're done. Don't take it out, take it out. Never had a problem where there was a loose battery or the battery was going to fall out while I'm flying. I wonder if they had a German involved in this. And the German said, I want one click. And then they got two. So you gotta click this and this, and then you gotta press both release toggles and then you can pull it out. It's also a bit harder to pull it out and then you can feel the seal there it clicks in and then you have to lock in place very sturdy but over engineered but i'm sure they've got a reason why they did that we physically tested the flight time they're all charged to 100 percent both of these batteries i'm going to take both to 60 meters we're going to have a timer that's going to run for the duration i'm going to put screen record on i'm going to make sure that the settings the return to home settings for both of these are exactly the same we're going to fly them at the same time okay don't do this at home All right, the first one is coming home, the M4T. Okay, touchdown, 33 minutes, 35 seconds. Second drone is coming home, the Matrice 4 drone version, a uh, dock version. Nice, touchdown, 37 minutes. Picking again about five minutes extra. DJI specs is about 10 to 20%. So if this one flies 40 minutes, this one flies 45 minutes, you're just about over 10%. But you have to consider that this drone weighs about two kgs, where this one weighs about 1.2 kgs. And also with your battery being bigger, extra weight, it needs to be able to carry more. So normally when you take the battery price, you divide it using like a 100 watt hour battery, then you get the watt per money ratio. If you look at the recommended retail price of these two batteries, this one is about 5% more in cost, but you get 50% more capacity and you get more airtime out of it. So if you take the airtime into consideration, they basically cost the same, which is amazing. Next I wanna talk about the weather rating and the durability. This drone has got no IP rating, so you can't fly always when you want to fly. This drone has an IP rating of IP55. So the first number in the IP rating is for solids and the second number is for liquids. So the first five means it's completely dust proof. And the second five means that it is resistant to water jets from all directions. So personally, I wouldn't buy a drone that has got an IP rating because you then never know what the reason is why the person that sells it to you really wants to sell it. You actually potentially run into a rain cloud, you land in time and now you think, oh shucks, okay, this drone's gone a bit wet, so I'll rather just sell it. But with this drone, you don't have that risk at all. That's one thing that is quite important for me personally. I thought I mentioned it. One thing to consider is that this drone is future-proof. So if you're in a situation where you think that you might want to use a dock, but you want to have a drone that you can use in a dock, maybe in future, then you're definitely going to buy this drone and you sort it. Also, if you want to resell, your audience is going to be bigger because you can sell it to people that want to use docks or people that don't want to use docks. One thing I need to bring up and this is for any of the DJI drones. When you go on to DJI online, if you look at the package configuration, it varies from country to country. So you'd rather ask us and we'll tell you what is in the box in South Africa. Let me know what you think in the comments. Will you choose portability over ruggedness? Which one fits your mission best? I hope you found this helpful. Like the video, subscribe and follow us on EDSSA. Where drones meet real world action.